Every system has at least 10 vulnerabilities, half of them of which are critical or high in nature. Multiply these numbers with hundreds of servers, application and network devices and the number of vulnerabilities goes into thousands. Prioritizing and mitigating becomes a complex task with a large number of false positives in the reports. Hello and welcome to Information Security, Governance, Risk and Compliance. My name is Salvador and today let's review vulnerability management. Let's get started. Our number one, policy, scope and responsibilities. Next one, there is an approved vulnerability management strategy or policy in place. And so the policy outlines the guidelines, procedures and expectations related to security assessments within an organization. Ensure the scope contains all the relevant systems, applications, and network devices. Make sure whether red teaming and boot teaming is included in the document. They can verify that all the roles and responsibilities are defined for the exercise. Ensure the vulnerability assessment team, the blue team, the red team, and the management and stakeholders to oversee the activities are defined. Point number two, testing methodology. Ensure a testing approach is well documented. Make sure automated tools for vulnerability scanning and simulated real world attacks for manual testing is well defined. For application testing, ensure a competent testing framework or something like OASP is defined. Also ensure the tools, techniques and standards used are documented with ownership. Point number three, frequency, risk and rating. Make sure the frequency of vulnerability assessment and penetration testing occurs as per the given policy. Check the reports and verify the dates and the frequency. Ensure the assessments are implemented based on compliance or regulatory requirement are based on a new deployment of the system. Next, the risk, criticality, and project timelines basis of the prioritization are described and implemented. Most likely, the standard project timelines are generally 30, 60, and 90 for high, medium, and low level of severity issues. Sometimes an emergency patch or a zero-day patch which is critical, it needs to be implemented as soon as possible. Ensure asset discovery, including of all hardware, software, and applications and devices that are connected to the network, is performed and well documented. Point number four authorization and rules of engagement. Prior to starting the VAPT exercise, ensure that all the VAPT activities are authorized by relevant stakeholders and a written consent is obtained from the system owners. Check and verify the rules of engagements are defined and whether testing is happening as per the rules of engagement to ensure the security of sensitive data and impact on production systems. In number five, reporting, documentation and remediation. Ensure the report contains the findings, severity levels, and recommended actions. Make sure vulnerability disclosure reports include the name of the vulnerability and time of discovery, the vulnerability risk score based on CV database, what systems the vulnerability impacts, and proof of concept exploits or demonstration of how a bad actor can use the vulnerabilities and the remediation steps. Make sure the timelines for mitigating the vulnerabilities is followed with respect to their severity and as per the documented policy. And finally, point number six, board presentation and performance. Make sure the vulnerability assessment and penetration testing reports are presented to the board on a regular basis. Ensure the management and the board is aware of all the possible risks from the vulnerabilities defined. Ensure the security assessment tools are up to date with proper configurations. 
make sure the tools are not misconfigured to bypass or lower severity levels. Make sure the security tools are configured with multi-factor authentication, integrated with SIM and run on current versions. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe, like and share. See you in the next video.